everyone, welcome back to another Python video. Before getting started into the topic today, let's review what we did last time. So last time, we learnt more about strings. So today we're going to cover lists. So we'll find that the method string slicing and indexing that I have taught you in the previous episode are going to be used in this episode too. So far, we've already learned about four data types, floats, integers, strings, and boolean. A list is a collection of data where its values can contain many different data types. So to help you understand more, I'm going to explain the syntax of a list. To make a list, you first need to make a variable, in this case, toys, and then assign it to some values over here. So on the right of the assignment operator, I have square brackets, and inside it goes some examples of toys. Since the values are just string values, they are within quotes and each value is separated with a comma. These values could be any data type you want, for example, integers, floats, or even boolean. So here are some more examples of using lists. So I make a variable called stationary and assign it to some values that are strings. I also make a variable called people's ages and assign it to some values that are integers. So over here, I'm checking if the values are lists using the type function. Let's see what the output would be if one of the values are strings and one are integers. So if we press enter, the output should say class and then lists. So now let's check the type of our variable called people's ages. So you see that it is a list. So it doesn't matter whether the values are strings, integers or whatever values they are, they are still a list. So, as mentioned in the previous episode, we saw how to index different characters in strings. Similarly, we can use indexes to extract an element from a list. So, over here, you see that we are trying to access particular items of a list, instead of accessing just characters or letters. So, we just type out our variable's name, which is famous brands, and in square brackets, we type the particular index that we want to access. So I'm trying indexes 1, 2 and 4. And I'm going to try this out in the idle shell. And also I'm making them double quotes because I just realised that the value McDonald has an apostrophe in it, so Python will get confused. So if we press enter, we will get the value Coca-Cola. So let's count up indexes. So Apple is the index 0, Coca-Cola is the index 1. So with lists as well, it starts from 0. So you'll see there will be McDonald's. So since Coca-Cola is the index 1, McDonald's must be the second index. So you'll see that it's going to output Starbucks. So since McDonald's is the index 2, then Amazon is the index 3, and then Starbucks must be the index 4, which is also the last value in the list. Just like strings, lists can be sliced as well. So it's the same method as string slicing, except we type the indexes of the values of the list, Instead 
of an individual character or letter and trying indexes 0 to 2, 4 to 6 and 2 to 3. And let's see what happens if we try this out in the idle shell. It is quite a long list, but I'm done now. So if you press enter, it will output red and orange. So red is index zero, so it's first, and then orange is index one, so it's second in the list. But you see that we've written zero to two. So the same rule that comes in here, so it goes up to the one index before the ending index. So if our ending index was, let's say, um, 5, which is indigo, and we sliced it from 0 to 5, then it will stop at blue, the fourth index. So it always stops one index before. So if you press enter, it will print out blue and indigo. So blue is index 4, which is over here. And then indigo is index 5, which is over here. So again, it goes up to the index before the ending index. So while it won't be printed. So you'll see that it will output yellow. So yellow is the second index. So yellow is over here. So again, it goes up to the index before the ending index. So that will be two. So basically back to the last slide, it's just the same as telling it to print the second index. Mutable means that you can change something. And we could do that in a list by changing or replacing one value with another. So let's say you make a variable called favorite foods. And let's say that you like to eat chocolate, pizza, ice cream and cake. But one day you get bored of cake and you like burgers instead. So in order to place cake with burger, we have to type a variable's name, favorite foods over here. And inside the square brackets goes the index, in this case, three. On the right side of the assignment operator goes the value that we want to replace with that index. To see whether the changes have occurred, you can type your list variable and see. Let's try this out in the idle shell. So if we press enter, it will output chocolate, pizza, ice cream, and then instead of cake, it will output burger. Because we've replaced that in the third index, so cake is in the third in index, so it will delete cake and then add burger onto the third index. So here is a challenge that you could try to attempt. So of course this challenge is optional, but this is a chance where you can test your knowledge about the things we've learnt so far in the video. So let me read the challenge out to you. Create a list of sports and then access particular values in that list and then use your knowledge of string slicing to slice particular values of that list. So there's no particular right or wrong answers. If you want, you can pause this video now and try to solve this challenge. So here is an example solution to how you might solve this problem. I make a variable called sports and assign it to five values, football, basketball, tennis, cricket and badminton. I then access index one of my variable sports values, which the answer is basketball. And then I access index four badminton and then you see at the bottom i'm iterating through particular values of this list so it's 
two to four, which answers are tennis and cricket. And zero to three, which answers are football, basketball and tennis. As well as lists having values in them, there also can be empty lists. Empty lists are lists that have nothing inside of them, hence they are empty. So the reason we use empty lists is that we will later add items to it using the append function. So this example is kind of realistic because say for example you are starting a brand new school and you have no friends, yet your list is empty. But then, as you make more friends, you can add them to your list. So I make a variable called friends and assign it to an empty list. Also, as a fun fact, a pen means to add something to the end of something. And Python is adding a value onto the end of your list. So we type our variable's name, friends dot append and then the value that we want to add into this list in this case kazumi over here we can type our variable's name friends to see what values are in the list so far and it should have been the value that we have just added into the list kazumi and then try it with more of our friends names this time joseph and alfie let's try this out in the idle shell So if you press enter, you see that it's going to output Kazumi. So Kazumi is the only value of the list, since at the start we assigned it to an empty list, and then we just added one value, Kazumi, onto it. Also, if we type friends, and then inside the brackets we put zero, and we press enter, you see that it's just going to output Kazumi, which is the only value in the list. So we can only access index 0, which is Kazumi, and we can only access one index because we only have one value in the list. But let's add more now. I can't really type, sorry. So if we press enter after adding two values onto it, Joseph and Alfie, it will print out three values, Kazumi, which we added first, and then the two values that we've just added, Joseph and Alfie. So as an extension, you can try to do this, but with your friends' names. So here are some more commands that you can apply to your list. So insert adds a value to your list, but you can choose exactly where you want to put it in the list. Unlike append, which adds the value to the end of your list. Removes, meaning it's pretty straightforward, it removes a value from your list. Delete is an alternative way of removing or deleting a value from your list. And sort, basically sorts the values in your list in a particular way. I will explain more about it later. And reverse basically reverses the order of your list. So it will put your list's values in reverse order. So if something is at the last index of your list, it will go to the first index of your list and vice versa. So let's try these out now. So we are going to learn more and try out the three commands, insert, remove, and delete. So let's try insert first. So for this particular example, I make a variable called shopping list and assign it to six values. Bread, milk, cheese, pasta, yogurt or yogurt, depending on how you pronounce it, and tomatoes. So what I do is type the variable's name and then type dot insert and then two things inside the brackets is the index position two in this case where we want to insert the value and the second thing is the value sweets to be inserted at that index but there's a problem there is already something in that index value cheese so what it does is put sweets in that index 
and everything after it moves one index up. And then I print out my variable's name to see if the new list with our value sweets inside it. This explanation is quite complex, but you'll understand it more when we try it out in the idle shell right now. So if we press enter, it will print out our list, but there's one value extra, so we've inserted sweets at index position 2. So if cheese is already in that index, cheese will move one index up, which is index 3, and same for the rest of the values. So now let's move on to remove. So we type our variable's name, shopping list, and then we type dot remove to remove the value that's inside of it cheese so everything else above cheese would have to move one index down instead of moving one index up and delete is basically the same thing except we type del and then a space so del stands for delete and then we type our variable's name shopping list and then instead of typing the value that we want to delete we type the index that we want to delete so we want to delete index 5 so that's tomatoes over here we are printing out our variable's name shopping list to see the new list so let's try both of these commands out in the idle shell So you see here, I've typed the whole variable out again. So since last time we inserted a value inside the list, so there's an extra value. But I don't want there to be any confusion because in the slides, the variable still has its original values, which are these. So we're going to try remove and delete with the original values. So if you press enter, you see that it will print the values out of the list, except there's no value cheese, because we've basically removed or deleted the value cheese from the whole list. So for Dell, I'm basically typing the whole list again because since uh, we've already removed one value, you out. So if you press enter, you see that it will print all the values out in the list except the fifth index. So the fifth index contains the value tomatoes. So since we've deleted it, and also you notice that Dell is in orange because it's a key word. So since we've deleted the value tomatoes out from the list, it won't appear when we print out the list again. So now let's move on to sort and reverse. So first let's learn about sort. So I make a variable called numbers and assign it to five values. 45.6, 78.12.21, 1000.1, 1000.2, 1000.3, one hundred and six point three nine and five hundred and forty one and this list contains some integers and some votes then I type my variables name numbers and then I type dot sort and I type small brackets this command would sort all the numbers in order from smallest to biggest and over here I'm typing out my variables name to see the new sorted list and in the second example, I type my variable's name, numbers, again, and then type dot reverse, and leave the brackets empty again. So, this command would put all the values in the list in reverse order. And over here, I am typing my variable's name, numbers, to see the new reverse list. I'm going to try this out in the idle shell and see what happens.
So if I press enter, you see that it's going to print out the list, but in a particular order. So you see that the numbers are arranged from smallest to biggest. So if you press enter, you see that it will print our list out, but in a different order. So it will reverse it. So the value at the end, which is 541, will be at the start over here. And then the value 106.39 will be over here. 1809.367 will stay in the same place, it's in the middle. And 12.21 will be over here. 78 will be here. And then 45.6 will be over here. So it will basically reverse the whole list. So this time, let's see what happens if the values are strings and we try to sort. So if you press enter, you see that it will sort the values in a particular order. So this time, it is sorting all these values in alphabetical order. So you see that E comes first, so Eiffel Tower is first, and then G comes second, so Golden Gate Bridge will come second, S comes third, so Stonehenge will come third, and then T, and it's the fourth or last value in the list. So we'll basically arrange the values in alphabetical order. So now let's look at membership operations. And the commands are in and not in. So let's first focus on in. So we make a variable called citrus fruits and assign it to three values, lemon, lime, and grapefruit. And then I type mango, which is a string data type. So that is the value I want to check if it's present in our list, citrus fruits. And the output would either be true or false, which is a boolean. So let's try this out in the idle shell and see what happens. So if we press enter, it's going to print out false. So mango is not in our variable called citrus fruit values so it results in false so now let's move on to not in so i type the same thing except i type not in instead of in and i check if pomegranate i don't know if i pronounced that right is not in our variable's name citrus fruits values so again the output will either be true or false which is a boolean so let's try this out in the idle shell and see what happens. So if you press enter, you see that it will result in true. So pomegranate is not in a variable called citrus fruits because the only values inside it are lemon, lime, and grapefruit. So let's concatenate two different lists together. So I make two variables, week one subjects and week two subjects. Week one subjects is assigned to maths, history, music, and art. And week two subjects is assigned to science, English, geography, and French. And then I make a new variable called fortnight subjects and assign that to week one subjects plus week two subjects. Because we want to add two variables values together in one variable, Fortnite subjects. And over here, we are printing out our variable Fortnite subjects. Hopefully the list will contain all the values in week one subjects and week two subjects. And over here, Let's see the output of those two individual lists and see if the list values are still the same. Let's try this out in the idle shell. So 
So I'm going to put week two subjects first. And then plus week one subjects. And then I'm going to print Fortnite subjects out. So you see that science, English, geography and French, which are the subjects for week two subjects. And then maths, English, history and art, which are the subjects for week one subjects. So second. So, since I've changed the order of these two variables in the concatenation line, it changes the order of the final result. So now let's move on to the final slide for today, using built-in functions with lists. So I make a variable called numbers2, and I assign it to 7 values, 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, and 1 million. So over here, then means the length of the list, how many different values there are in the list. I do the same over here except I type max or maximum instead of len. So max means the highest value in the list, in this case the biggest number. I do min, min means the smallest or minimum value in the list, in this case the smallest number. I do sum, sum means all of the values or numbers in this case in the list added together. And then over here, I do some calculations with different commands. So I do the sum of the list divided by the maximum number of the list and the sum divided by the length of the list. Let's try all these commands out in the idle shell. So if you press enter, you see that I would output 7. So there are 7 values in the list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this means how many actual values are on the list, not the indexes. So there are 6 total indexes in the list. So if I press enter, you see that we will print the maximum number of the list, which is a million. So if I press enter, you see that it will print the minimum value of the list, which is 1 in this case. So I've made this easy for you putting them into ascending order. So ascending order means going from smallest to biggest and the opposite is descending order which goes from biggest to smallest. So if I press enter you see that it will output 1,111,011. So whenever we add a number let's so let's start with um 1 million for example and we add 100,000 onto it it becomes 1 million and 100,000. So basically it's adding 1 to every column from right to left. So that's why the answer is 7 ones. So if you press enter, you see that it will output one point and then six ones. So basically, the sum of numbers two is basically what we just did, seven ones. So that's divided by the maximum number of our variable numbers two. So it's divided by one million. So you end up with this answer. So basically, I can explain you a little bit about this. So, since there is no decimal point, it would be at the end. But if we divide by a million, the decimal point moves six spaces to the left. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, which is here. So it moves six decimal places because there are six zeros in a million. So if you press enter, you see that it will result into this really, really complicated number. I can't explain that right now, but I can explain you what we're doing. So we're doing sum of numbers 2, so that's this number again, 7 ones, divided by the length of numbers 2. So the length of numbers 2 is 7, so it's basically this number divided by 7, and then it results in that really complicated number with loads of decimal points. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I hope this Python video has helped you and see you in the next video. Also, sorry for not uploading in a while. I might upload more in the beginning of the June half term.